Now, new research says those wildfires half a world away are actually a bad sign for pregnant women. The study in the Journal of the American Medical Association links climate change with harm to newborns. Both heat and air pollution contribute to premature births and low birth weight. For more on this, I'm joined by Rupa Basu, an author of the study and the chief of the Air and Climate Epidemiological Section for the Office of Environmental Health Hazard Assessment in California. Hello, many thanks for joining us on the program. Uh, could we just break this down initially? Because let's uh, first explain to us, if you could, the correlation between birth outcomes and climate change. Sure. So in this review article, uh, we examined heat and um, air pollution and um, current heat and air pollution. So not even projected heat and air pollution and found uh, significant associations with preterm delivery stillbirth and also low birth weight. And these have uh, large implications. If you think of uh, climate change and a warming uh, climate, uh, these uh, associations are projected to get worse in the future. So they're projected to get worse in the future, but when we look at who is worst at risk, most at risk, your, your research showed that it was African-American mums. Now, why is that? Yes, that's correct. Um, that's mostly because of uh, where uh, black mothers or African-American mothers predominantly live. So there's greater heat uh, exposure just because of their urban heat island effect. There's less uh, uh, green space in those areas and more chemicals um, and contaminants released um, in the air from fossil fuel industry. The houses are typically closer to uh, power plants, um, closer to freeways. So all of those exposures uh, play a role. Also with the heat itself, um, if you think of, about housing conditions, there's less air conditioning and then there's also less access to air conditioning, meaning that even if there is air conditioning in a home, uh, people often can't afford to use it. Um, and so because pregnant women are at a very high risk, um, if they can't have uh, any uh, mitigation, that could create a huge problem. Now, we're talking here about a high risk of premature birth. So explain to us in real terms, what does that mean for these babies as they grow up in kind of de developmental terms? Yes, so that is the main issue. So uh, premature delivery is anything less than 37 weeks. In California, we typically say tw 20 to 37 uh, gestational weeks. And what happens is there's less um, ability to develop in terms of neurological development. And so it's not just a short-term issue. It ends up being long-term impairments in terms of cognitive function, learning abilities. Um, there's a lot of issues that, that come up. And so, um, and of course, there's a whole um, economic and uh, mental health issues as well. So, so we're uh, seeing... Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. So we're, we're potentially seeing a generation of babies who are physically affected by climate change. Uh, we often hear that green government policies are expensive to implement, but what's the financial cost of this particular effect of climate change? Yes, well, if you look at, um, there's been some economic analyses on this, and it ends up being um, millions of dollars um, per year, and that's because... Uh, you know, if you're looking at pregnant women and their and their fetuses, that's a very large cost compared to a person who might be older and um, and uh, you know dying at you know 90 years old when their um, life expectancy is not that much higher. So if you're uh, looking at very early life exposures, the uh, cost is actually much greater because of that. Um, there could be hospitalizations um, involved, surgeries you know, a, a lot of things that um, would attribute uh, to that cost. And of course, uh, there's also a uh, cost for the, the parents as well. Okay, concerning research there. Well, Rupa Basu, we really appreciate you coming on the program.